Today, we're going to be breaking down my MMA debut. Now, throughout the length of my martial arts career, all the way up from when I started around eight years old to right now when I'm 36, this MMA fight was probably the scariest situation, scariest moment, scariest training camp I've ever been in. And that's pretty crazy when you consider everybody I've fought, all the people that I defeated for the belts, the few times where I lost belts against crazy high level guys, all the places in the world I've traveled, this fight was the most scary and that's why I wanna break it down for you today. So the very first thing I want you guys to recognize is I'm not somebody who does things on a spur of the moment idea normally. If I prep up for a kickboxing fight, for instance, my very first kickboxing fight, it took me two or three years of training in the gym and making the transition from point fighting to full contact fighting where I felt very comfortable, comfortable enough to actually get in and have somebody who's gonna try and knock me out. Again, we're talking years. But for this MMA debut, I was competing for Bellator. I was the Bellator champion for their kickboxing promotion. And all of a sudden they go, oh, we don't have another fight for you for another 10 months or something like that. And this was kind of like a spur of the moment thing. And they're like, do you want to try MMA? And I went, well, it's not something that I really, really want to do. Like I dabbled in a little groundwork for maybe a month here and then I take a bunch of time off then I do another month and I kind of did that sporadically three or four times throughout two or three years but it was not something I was super passionate about and the only reason I decided to dive into this MMA fight was financial matters. Bellator was paying me quite nicely for the kickboxing fights. I went, oh, 10 months between fights. That's gonna hurt the checkbook. So yes, I will take an MMA fight. So I walked in told my jujitsu coach who I hadn't been training with for quite a while, I have a fight in 10 weeks, can we get ready? And he goes, let's start right now. And that basically takes us to right here where we are gonna kick off this fight. We're gonna go through, watch clips. I'm gonna explain to you many, many mistakes that I made, but keep in mind, my jujitsu coach only had 10 weeks to prep me up. And basically starting from scratch, he went, well, what? do we need to focus on? And he basically went, I want you to know how to get out of this and this and this. We're not gonna really worry about offense because we don't have enough time. Obviously the striking was gonna be my primary offense and he just wanted to make sure that I could get up. But we didn't have enough time to do any real cage wrestling, submissions. And I remember him even saying when we were in the locker room and then we started practicing, I think it was side mount or side control or some, some position. He's like, oh shoot, we didn't even cover this other position. And there was just so much to get done. And so such a short period of time. And like I said, this is not normally something that I would do. I'm very precise, very methodical, very cautious when I try something new. So for me to do this, it's no wonder why I was so scared and so nervous going into this fight. So let's roll it right here. You can see my jujitsu coach, Matt Kaiser, on the right hand side there. My brother Aaron was also in my corner and just a brand new experience, which is so weird after being in fight sports for so long, and especially just going in and going, holy smokes, I really have no idea what's gonna happen. And I was just on top of the world in kickboxing. It'd been a long time since I'd felt like I'd taken a big loss or anything like that. But going in here, just like a fish out of water, a little baby, right away, coming up for the calf kick, he fires back. Once you put on these MMA gloves, everything changes in terms of striking. It's just wild how, Takedowns, little gloves can just affect everything. And this opponent is somebody who had, I can't even remember his record now. It was, a, it was just a, a few fights. He had a, a long experience of martial arts and his striking, as you can see, is quite nice. His height was one of the big factors where we went, whoa, this is odd. I believe he was something like 6'2". I mean, he has a substantial height over me, as you can see. And... If you look at my style, obviously my hands are open. I'm protecting myself a little differently, not locking the hands right to the head, but I'm not changing my style up too much. And that's one of the difficulties with MMA for me. And that short period of time is I didn't have time to alter my striking style. So if I had somebody like right here, I'm pressuring, I'm pressuring, I'm pressuring. 
and he gets me down because I did not move forward, strike, strike, step back. Forward, forward, strike, strike, step back. You have to take those pauses. I did not do that. You can see from here, he's on top applying some shoulder pressure. This is the half guard. And I can't remember how much work we were doing in this. Right from here, I should be trying to make sure that he doesn't have an easy road to getting into the mount. I have my foot hooked under trying to stop him. Should be trying to sneak onto my side, I think. I haven't been keeping up with my jujitsu lately. Trying to get the bridge, give up my back because I didn't have a proper whizzer. And then from there I remember just he was getting my back and went, I'm gonna dive. This is one of the positions that we did a decent amount of work out of, back control. I felt very confident that if I had my back got taken, I would be able to escape. Probably in hindsight, a bad way to be confident because the back position is just one of the very dangerous ones. But yeah, overall, it was just something where I went, I felt very confident because we did a lot of work there. And that was, I guess, my credit to my coach, uh, Matt Kaiser, just going, yeah, this is somewhere we want you to be very strong. And from here, back on my feet. You can see I'm trying to utilize my head, but this is something I really struggled with, thinking of my head as an additional tool to control people. My coach really tried to force it into my head, and I had a lot of trouble because I just felt it was too mean. And there's a number of times where I did not utilize it correctly in my fights or training. One of the big things that I note in MMA is, like, I wanted to get takedowns because I wanted the experience, but I should have just been disconnecting. And I've made that mistake a number of times, just trying to overforce something when I should just be going disconnect, punch. That's what I'm good at. Why am I trying to wrestle and fight? Especially with a guy who's tall and lanky and just going to be very hard to throw down. Like right here, I should be trying to bury that head a little tighter to the chest. That's better. Control the chin with the top of your head. Push their head into an uncomfortable position. The fatigue is always such a massive factor in the arms for me. It was something which I did not realize I was going to experience just because I always have such fantastic arm conditioning for punching. But it's that pull and push and that just ultra fatigue that builds up by not snapping, but resisting. And it surprised me, surprised me a lot how much it wore me down. From here, there's a little, little position there that we tried to work on for one of my couple takedowns that we practiced in the gym. But you can just tell, just a little frantic, not really as focused as I should be. And had we done more work sort of in this era, maybe I would have done better. But, you know, the only reason I'm sitting here is because I feel quite confident in the clinch. So for me here, it's not that different than throwing, you know, knees and, and elbows and all those sort of things, but I'm still making mistakes like right there. Shouldn't let them get me into a guillotine that easy. I should be able to pull that leg out and flip to side control and get my head into that nice, nice safe position. But, you know, I've learned so much since then. Like I said, I haven't even been keeping up on my jujitsu for the most part, but I learned so much just because throughout the years of watching MMA now, having a little bit more understanding of what's happening, it just helped me improve so much. We talked about the arm fatigue. Here you can see me just uh, toss my arms, just going, why are they so heavy? I've only gone five minutes. Like I can normally go 15 minutes in a title fight and not have my arms that fatigue. Just different experience, something new. And before we move on to round two, I want to take a moment and thank the sponsor of this episode by Optimizers, who have been playing an integral part in the training camp, which I'm in right now. The big thing that I'm noticing with this magnesium supplement is my sleep is more on point. And with my sleep being more on point, I'm gonna be able to train harder in the morning. In addition, and this is the big thing that I'm noticing, like the main factor now that I've picked up training for the last three weeks, I'm recovering so much faster than I feel like I used to. I used to have Sundays off, and then on Monday, I'd be like, oh my gosh, I need a couple more days. But guess what? It's Monday today for me. It's the first day of training camp, and my body's feeling fresh. It's feeling strong. And I don't have that same overall lactic acid fatigue where I'm just going, oh, I can't train another moment without my body just feeling like it wants to give out. 
believe me guys, if you have not tried this yet, because I know so many people want little hacks into how to perform better, how to recover faster, how to sleep better. This is the supplement for you. And if you know anything about this channel, you know anything about me, you know I will not recommend anything to you I do not truly believe in. I am taking four of these per day right now, two for breakfast and two before bed, and I'm gonna do it the whole training camp, and I do believe it's gonna give me that extra little edge. If that's something that you want, head over to magnesiumbreakthrough.com forward slash Gabriel, use the promo code Gabriel10 to get 10% off and just up your overall performance in life. And now guys, let's move back into the MMA debut. So here we go into round number two. And at this point, I remember going, okay, I got through the first round and my confidence was just up that much more. That's always the nice thing about fighting. I find if you're nervous going in and once you actually get into the fight, the nerves go away and then you kind of go on that autopilot, or at least that's my experience. So we're moving around here. Nice little attack, little stumble, just getting too excited on the striking aspect. Going for that calf kick. We've seen a lot of guys be very successful with that. Nice high round kick into the side kick. Very nice side kick. I step back on that one, but he still managed to give me a good side kick. I always find it funny when you land something on somebody and then they try and land the same thing back. It's going to be very hard, in my opinion, to land a successful damaging technique when you're replicating what somebody else just did. Nice uppercut cross there. One of the big mistakes that I see as I watch myself striking right now is my stance is fairly high, but most importantly, when I finish my punch at punch, I don't take the step back. I stay in that, that range where if somebody wanted to shoot on me, they would be very successful. And this guy was not somebody who shot in a lot. He was more of a striker, I believe. They're obviously better on the ground than me, but more of a striker overall. So good matchup because if I look at this right now, I go, man, anybody with a good takedown would have shot in on me very easy. And nice cross there to the head. Remember at this point, I didn't even know how to get my bicep in and jam somebody, cross face them when they shot in. It was in the further MMA training where I learned that. So like I said, 10 weeks. It's not a long time when you're trying to get in shape, focus on your striking, do everything you're really good at, but then also learn so many other things that are brand new to you. From here, we're gonna see me just start to build my comfort level in the striking. Again, making many mistakes in terms of where my body positioning is and where the shots might come and how easy it would be for somebody to get me down. But my striking starts to get a little bit more comfortable. Nice little check from him there. It's because I didn't set up the low kick. Then you see me follow up with a jab jab into the low kick. So much easier to land low kicks when you just do something with your hands before. Nice front kick to the face there. Jolted his head back. He tries for the same thing, like we already said, trying to repeat what somebody just landed on you often does not work. That front kick to the face is something which could have been very damaging if I'd just gone up a little bit more, a little more follow through, similar to what Chandler just landed on Ferguson, although maybe just a little bit technically prettier. But, you know, Chandler's was much more devastating in terms of the knockout, so it doesn't really matter how nice it was. Just Slowing the pace down here just a little bit. When I do let my hands go now, I'm putting a little bit more power into them. They're a little bit scarier, just like that. Slipping over top. Good body shot there. That one hurt him. On the attack right here, terrible positioning. If he wanted to take me down, it would be so difficult. I go for a little sprawl there. From here, I should have spun around much faster. Very, very slow on my transition. We did a lot of work controlling people from the back. At this point, I didn't really know what to do, so I just let him get up. Fire to the inside low. Signature move for me, scissor knee, which landed right to his head. And there is my MMA debut with the victory. Let's take a look at a couple highlights here. Head kick, which he blocked nicely into the body shot. A little too much attack still. Big body punch there, no setup. I love this one, just step in and fire. People don't expect it and they go to block high and that body's usually open. This was the one that really hurt him. A couple of nice little touches there. Right now I should already be trying to deal with that sprawl. Inside low. And then from there, going, oh, I'm not finding anything into the scissor knee. 
clipped him right in the think just below the eye and he just goes down and overall I'm happy with this victory because like I said this it was super scary for me if I'd had maybe six months to prep up which is sort of what I thought in my mind if I ever went to MMA I would take a six month slot of time to really prepare then I probably would not have been as scared and much more confident going in but not having the time to do all that it was just pile everything in as much as we can focus on getting in shape and focus on that offense which is a strength of mine in terms of striking and then from there sort of put the jujitsu on the back end in terms of striking what did i learn when we talking about normally fighting in 10 ounce gloves and then going down to four ounce the big thing that i did not focus on at all in this was focusing on the head movement and a lot of footwork when somebody attacks, just take the step back. I didn't do that, and it's not something that I do with boxing gloves on. I just stand my ground and I work on a nice, solid sort of shell. But with the MMA gloves, I wish I would have worked just a little step back, a little push, just create some distance. Why not? And then if somebody jumps on you, instead of staying here and trying to use the four ounce gloves to shell, just get the head off the center line and then push back. And this is why we see so many MMA fighters prioritize movement over defense with the hands. It's just a much safer, more effective way to stay safe with those smaller gloves. So I hope everybody enjoyed this breakdown of my MMA debut. Was it one of my best fights? No. Was I proud of it? Yes. Mostly because of the anxiety and the fear I had going into it, which I already talked to you about. Will you guys see me in another MMA fight in the future? Unfortunately, probably not. I did not love it. And that's the big thing about combat sports, which I feel you need to really have dialed in, is that passion for it. Yes, jujitsu to me is interesting and I enjoy it, but do I enjoy it enough to go in and have somebody try to you know, squeeze my neck or squish my head or punch me on the ground? No, I didn't love it enough to really make it a passion thing where I'm willing to risk damage and all that sort of thing. So for me, karate combat, which I'm gonna be competing in, is a nice sort of middle ground where I'm still gonna have smaller gloves and there's still some element of takedowns and such. But really for me, kickboxing, boxing, anything with the 10 ounce gloves will always be my sport, the sport that I love the most. So I hope everybody enjoyed this video. If you guys did, please give it a like. If you haven't already, join the channel and get subscribed. Make sure you head over to magnesiumbreakthrough.com forward slash Gabriel. Make sure you use the promo code Gabriel10 to get 10% off this product, which I absolutely love and seems to be making a world of difference right now in my training camp. I'm not having the same fatigue, which I normally do. And I'm so grateful to buy optimizers for that. Guys, as always, train hard, and I'll see you back here soon for another video.